the point at which we heard we got the tour and going on tour with them was one month. So the, this entire system was built in one month. Uh, a lot of it was drop shipped to Malmo, Sweden, and we assembled it on site uh, for over the course of a week there. It was pretty overwhelming. I didn't sleep very much for about two weeks. <laughs> yeah. The system design was pretty much a collaboration between uh, between Big Nick uh, and Meyer and the production uh, of the band uh, because uh, there was some stipulations due to the weight limitation of the rig overall and the fact that, like Big Mick was talking about, having to uh, get rid of the TM array because it was too much weight in the middle of the of the rig and pushing all the weight out to the outside of, of the diamond. Uh, so between the folks at Meyer, including Bob McCarthy and Mike Maxson and, and some other folks and, and the production, they came up with the design and the idea of having a Leo on the long dimensions of the arena, Lion hanging on the short dimensions of the, of the arena and doing the end fire 1100s to, to replace the TM array. Uh, along with uh, underhung, all down-firing leopards around the perimeter of it and delay clusters or upper mains basically to cover the upper third tier section. So it's actually a very flexible system and we haven't reached its limitations. We've always like had plenty of headroom to go if we needed to. We've started with the, the uh, Meyer presets and then sort of tweaked them over the course of time to something a little bit more suitable to the way we want to run it. Um, uh, but it, it's really, really flexible and easy to use uh, and a great way to start out of the gate with a head start. Like the 700s, you always seem to be running out of headroom on those. And this, they, there was a very odd limiting characteristic to them that you would run into really easily. But the 1100s have like so much more power than the 700s do, and are so pure and and like we hardly ever get anywhere near to the end of those, uh, to the headroom or you know the limit of the headroom on them. So pretty much that limit is gone out the door. I mean, obviously there's a ton of zones, uh, and we purposely. Uh, shot high in terms of the system drive. It's basically one output channel on the, the Meyer Galaxy system that we have per speaker up in the air um, with a couple of, uh, uh, of exceptions to that. Um, so I have a, a quite a bit of control over the system. Um, and uh, luckily enough, most of the rigs when we deploy this in arenas, we can copy and paste settings around the outside. Each quadrant is are four copies. So I can link zones together and treat one quadrant, get it aligned and copy it to the other ones because the rigging plot doesn't change from show to show. It's just like the architecture of the room is slightly different from one side to the other sometimes. And that's just, just as easily as un, like un, unlinking that special zone and treating it slightly differently. Uh, it doesn't take that long to to a line or like I can do it by myself in about an hour maybe sometimes an hour and a half in depth uh, Mick is feeding me uh, AES signals which is basically left right uh, a super sub VLFC fill and a uh, vocal fill for around the front of the stage there's leopards uh, the smallest uh, Meyer well one of the smaller Meyer uh, line array speakers we just use them as point source boxes around the perimeter and that's just got a vocal heavy front fill for the front row. Um, so those four signals, in addition to an analog left, right backup, just in case, feeding uh, uh, my galaxy system down here. So I've got four master galaxies. Uh, one is just basically handling the analog backup, so I'm not even using that as a spare. But the other three are basically distributing master stems to an AVB network to another 20 
galaxies 10 on each side to drive the system. So there are a zillion outputs to, to distribute out uh, to the rig. Everything, the, the, the drive racks are on the ground, so we're sending analog lines with their socket lines up to the rig uh, and around. I'm trying to do as close a tonal balance everywhere as I possibly can. I mean, I, when I line the system, I wander around with a couple of wireless mics and, and uh, have a wireless smart on my tablet, and I'm actually walking around and just seeing how everything spectrally changes through the room. Like, and sometimes it takes a little shelf boost to, on the upper end of the array to throw high frequencies a little further or like some like low mid cuts on the on the leopard underneath to try to clean up the guitars but uh it's, i'm trying to make it so everyone has the same show as much as possible so, but i guess i i don't know if that's that's probably this i'd probably do the same thing for every any band i work for so you know one advantage of, of doing a center stage in a lot of these really bad sounding arenas is that everyone is on average much closer to the source rather than reverberance uh, so you're not throwing along the long distance of the of the amphitheater or the arena, you're you're in the middle throwing the same distance everywhere basically. So it actually can make some bad sounding arenas sound a lot better.